and welcome to another video from Paraplays. And in the previous videos, I was going to introduce you to the journey for me into Airsoft. Now, I've had a Tokyo Marui pistol for quite a while now. We've done some indoor stuff, CBQ. But I've been wanting to get my grubby mitts on something decent and assault rifle for a long time because I'm going to be doing some proper milsim when it comes to the Airsoft. And I thought you guys might find it interesting to follow me on this journey from, I won't say I'm a noob, but for somebody who's quite new to the milsim scene when it comes to the airsoft. And I shall try and document all the way through the kit that I that I bought, the kit that I already own. And in another video, I will probably go through the safety kit that I've got, the clothing and everything else, face protection and all that. I'll probably leave that for another video because I've already had some stuff for quite a while now. So as you can see on screen, I had a look at various assault rifles. And having speaking to the guys down at patrol base, um, I told them my budget and discussed a few things and what I was looking for. And a few people actually in there who do this on a regular basis all said this is an absolutely cracking rifle. This is an Amoeba Pro KM15, which means it's a 15 inch length barrel. And it's an Octa Arms M4. Now it comes in two variants, the black on screen actually you can see this. This is what we put down the barrel to clear any blockage. On a real rifle, that would probably be a barrel cleaner as well, but here we are, let's just get this bad barrel. Now this comes in various different lengths from nine, I think it even goes up to 20, I think, uh, the barrel length. It comes in either pure black or the two-tone, which is this one, which is the dark earth version, which I thought looked a little bit more interesting than just the pure black version. But again, there's no difference between these. It's all up to you. Now on the fire selector, the good thing with this is, is that it's actually programmable. It's an electronic a digital switch with a flat trigger. There is a little microchip in there that controls it. And it also means you can change it. Now I've had this change slightly customized. It's only a two minute job so that I have full auto safety. And instead of having a single fire, it's actually on burst. It will fire three rounds. And this is because it's electronic inside. You can change these to whatever settings you want. This is to close the cover on the back and like a real rifle you can pull this back to show the hopper on the other side and we'll get into that later on the video. Now it comes with a muzzle hider already attached and it comes with two iron sights and it is really is a solid piece of kit this and it feels fantastic when you've got it up on your shoulder. Really I'm quite impressed with the build quality on this. Some of the other weapons shall we say that I picked up were not as impressive as this one but here we are very nice indeed and what we'll do in the rest of the video is actually I'll show you that later that's the dust cover and the ejector for the real life weapon actually now this has got rather than the uh, Picatinny all the way around it's actually got a key mod mount which is a slightly different mounting system that's been used by the military an updated version that they wanted which was smaller low profile than the usual Picatinny and it just means there's a different mounting system for a lot of the accessories so let's get out my goodie bag and start to have a look what we've got in here now for Airsoft, there's always tons of stuff you need that you don't think you're actually going to need, but you end up taking loads and loads of stuff with you. So a decent bag with lots of pockets is going to be a good thing. So first up, we have a 12 volt LiPo battery. This gun is an AMG, which is all electric gun or an AEG, should I say. You also get gas blowback, but the things with the gas is, is that during different temperatures, such as winter and stuff, you're getting, getting into low pressures and things like that. So LiPo is the way to go. But these things, a slight warning here, these things can be dangerous. Treat these things with a lot of respect. And I shall go into why a little bit further into the video, but never ever charge up your lipo battery when you're not in the house we'll get into that a little bit further in so let's see what else we've got in our goodie bag some of these i've had for a while and some of them i bought today i've just not unwrapped them because i thought i'll do them all at once when we're together so this is the charger not a lot really to have a look at this it's the small one that goes in the large one goes directly into the weapon so it's the small mount in there that we actually go in and it's your usual standard 12 volt adapter not a lot really more to say about that but again i shall cover the the issues with lipo a little bit further in now this let's just open this up this is a one point bungee sling and this goes over the shoulder and you attach one end to the rifle and it means 
you can mount it, move completely freely while this is over your shoulder, and then when you want to put the weapon down or behind you to grab your pistol, or just while you're talking, you can hang in front of you all nice and good. Next in the goodie bag, what else have we got in here? Let's have a look. Can't remember what I've got in all these pockets. Okay, yeah, a couple of things in here. Eye protection. Now, I know I mentioned I was going to do another video on eye protection, but this is the Aboli safety glasses. You cannot use sunglasses. Please do not go to Airsoft with sunglasses on. You'll, they get smashed. Your eyes are the most important part of your body. So get yourself some decent eye protection. Now, these are clear glass. I did want yellow, but they didn't have any in. And these are not the most expensive things. But the problem with these are... These do not go all the way up under your eye. There is a slight gap around the eye socket. Now, these are legal for outdoors, but you cannot use these glasses in close quarters. So if you're going in and doing some up close and personal stuff, you must get some eye protection that covers the whole eye socket so the pellets cannot bounce in. It's entirely up to you. If you want to take the risk, it's up to you, but a lot of sites will not let you on for close quarters unless you've got the proper eye protection. Now this little gizmo here is going to give you a little idea of what else is in my goodie bag. This is a sight protection unit. If I can open this bag. Come here. Bloody thing. There we go. And there we go. This is a piece of clear plastic that goes on the Picatinny rails at the top. And this goes in front of your sight scope or anything else. It's actually got some vinyl on there just to protect it, which I will peel off. And this is a foldable. Now, it's been recommended to me to put it this way rather than folding it back because the pellets, when they hit, will actually travel up and away and they won't mark the actual plastic as hard as if you have it at a straight vertical position. The bag also comes with an Allen key and an extra little sight for when you've been shot in the face or the sight unit many times and it gets a little bit scratched. They're only cheap, but it really will save your sight unit or your scope or your L-can or whatever else you've got on there. Next in the goodie bag, we'll look at those in a minute. What else have we got here? This is a rubber mounting uh, kit. These are only cheap again, and they actually mount on the uh, key mod on the side of the weapon. What are they for? Well, it just gives you an extra little bit of grip, and it also makes your weapon look Gucci. If I turn these over, you can see how they work. They literally just push and pop, and they, they can be quite tricky to get on, but once they're on, they're on. They probably could do with warming up a little bit before you put these on. Again, not really any more than an accessory for a little bit of grip with your gloves on, but it certainly looks nice, and every, everybody wants the weapon to look their own way. Now, I've actually lost my other airsoft gloves. I don't know where they are. So I've bought a new pair of some nice knuckles on here because it's going to be your right hand if you're right-handed or your left. Whichever one you grab that foregrip with, that's the hand that you're probably going to get hit the most with airsoft. And while it's not the most painful thing in the world, any pain you can get rid of is going to be better. And knuckles are a good place to get hit. Or a bad one, depending on how you want to look at it. So these are some nice tactical gloves. A little tip for you is always go for a size one size smaller because you want that glove to feel nice and tight in your hand and you get a good grip. The last thing you want is floppy gloves. It'll just make you struggle a little bit later on. Next up, again, a lot of the guys recommended that we get one of these and this comes back to the LiPo battery. If you overcharge a LiPo battery, <clears throat> it can actually smoke, explode and set on fire. So this little baggie here we open this up and again it doesn't mean that you should leave the house with a lipo but don't be scared or afraid of using uh, a lipo battery it just means use it responsibly so that goes in the bag and then we take the power cords out through the corner and there you go and i've got to admit it, it worried me a little bit with the stories they were telling me uh, if you punch it with a knife or anything it will smoke and burst into flames just don't overcharge it when it's charged get yourself a charger that will switch off but just keep your eye on it anyway uh this is a foregrip just makes it you handling the weapon a lot easier it's a lot more stable yeah, of course you can rest this on walls or whatever you want to rest it on and it makes your rifle look gucci now here we are the piece de la resistance this is a Vism Duo 4x Sight. 
It's also got a offset sight and it's a green dot and you can also change this to be blue as well. A fantastic sight if I'm honest with you and this is not a replica. This is actually a real military sight. I want you to spend a little bit of money on this because not only does it make it look Gucci but it feels a little bit more authentic when you've actually got the real sight. There's various options in here for blue or green, including brightness. There's also wind and elevation. You can change the sight on, on the fly, including the uh, range. And also on the side here, if I can turn it on, I don't know if I've got the actual batteries in. Uh, no, it doesn't look like it. Looks like I'm going to have to actually get a new battery for this. I thought there was one in it. There obviously isn't. Um, Yes, we've also got your normal sighting one on the side. So if you're trying to pinpoint something quickly, you can actually look through the small day sight on the right and then move directly, flick your sight straight over or your head straight over to the main magnifying scope and your jobs are good. So there we are. There she is, all gucci up. And I can tell you, she not only does she look beautiful, she feels beautiful, unlike any other woman, you just can't wait to get her in your hands. So yes, it really is a, an absolutely stunning looking thing up close. The video is a little bit grainy. It's not really going to do it justice. I'm probably not going to add a huge amount of extra gubbins on here. I may add a small, small little bipod on the front. And regarding that, I may actually change the barrel, the inner barrel. But apart from that, there's not really a lot else. I could gooch it up, I guess, with a flashlight on the front or a laser sight. But for now, I'm just going to enjoy it for what it is. I've got to mention, the mag is also a high cap. Depending on where you play, you may be restricted to a smaller mag, especially when it comes to the Milsim stuff. But this is it. This is her. This is her all gooched up. Got the tactical gloves on. We've got all the stuff. All the buttons and switches on this thing work as the real one does. It really is a replica one-to-one. -one. You cannot tell the difference between this and the real thing. Got to be careful. I don't want my neighbours looking at me through the window thinking, who's that nutter? And get bloody swatted. with fire response team coming out. But there she is. Absolutely brilliant. And I will be following with more videos on my journey. I'm actually going to be doing some airsoft with patrol base in Yorkshire next week so I'll probably do another video on my Tokamaru pistol and the safety gear and the clothing and everything else but I hope you enjoyed this video just a little insight behind the curtain hope you enjoyed it it's time for me to say goodbye see you on the battlefield <laughs>